he finds that there could be no perceived bias, in part because his recollection is that his advice was not provided directly to the Minister for Aboriginal Affairs. He decides to sit. The High Court of Australia is now in session. Please be seated. All the matter for hearing. For hearing, Carton Yeri and another, and the Commonwealth of Australia. In our written submissions, we say that in substance, what happened in 1967 was a repeal and reenactment of this provision. Not merely the deletion of the word. And that, uh, as so understood, it reflected a founding intention which was relevant to the day 1967. Just as one looks at constitutional convention debates to see that in the 1890s people had in mind discriminatory laws, so one looks at the position of the community in 1967 to see that no one contemplated such laws. Are you not necessarily saying that there comes a point at which this court must say the parliament acting at least reasonably within the confines of legislative power could not properly have deemed it to be necessary to make this law for this race that, yes to, to, as a special law i mean i include the whole law. phrase I'm, what we, we say is that the constitution when originally adopted always intended that the race power should be applied in accordance with general community standards. Originally, discriminatory acts were justified because community standards of that era approved of such legislation. However, by now, the Australian people won't tolerate racially discriminatory legislation. And if, uh, if we're right that the, uh, the, the Constitution was always intended to adapt to those changing circumstances, then we're not changing the meaning of the original words, we're just saying that they apply in a different way. Is it your submission that it is impossible now or any time in the future for the Commonwealth to pass a law under the race power which is to the detriment of a race? Yeah unless the external objective facts to which I've referred most recently as uncontested values change. Suppose Aboriginal landholders in a certain part of North Queensland came across um, great mineral wealth and you wanted to put a special tax on it. Now you couldn't use the taxation power because it might discriminate between parts of states. Um, why couldn't you use the race power to impose the tax? If you can't use the taxation power to impose the tax, you shouldn't be able to use the ta race power. There's no reason for the race power to extend to the law with respect to taxation. And there's every reason for saying that that, uh, that principle, that it was discriminatory against the state, should apply in this case, and the Commonwealth shouldn't be able to get around it, because it happens to be owned by Aborigines, but the one on the other side of the boundary happens to be owned by a white man, and it's exempt from taxation. Usually the court says whether or not there should be legislation on a particular subject is a matter for Parliament and not the courts. So here the question will be one of we believe this is, the Parliament says, we believe it is necessary to pass this special law for the Aborigines, namely the Hind Marsh Island Bridge Act. And the question is whether or not this particular power is of a character that has some bounds, namely that it, 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 just because the Parliament says it's necessary doesn't mean that in all cases the court has to accept that that's so. Given the history of the developments of this century, not only in our country but in our country, and the referendum, that we reached a point where the power was changed, and it was changed with the authority of the people, to make it a power, if not for the benefit, principally of Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islanders, but of people of race, then at least not to prejudice them. You're that, that is part of history, that, that is part of the history we can't ignore, and that it was a power transmogrified with the authority of the people by the 1967 referendum. Well, Your Honour, I was going to come to the referendum, but I think Your Honour's question postulates that there couldn't have been a change in constitutional meaning without the referendum. 
and we would submit that that must be so, that the constitutional meaning must remain constant. In our submission, Your Honour, the suggestion that the people of Australia... Well, you just ignore completely the change of the world, the change of society, the change of attitudes. You're stamped with the meaning of prejudice of 1901. I could never accept that. Your Honour, it's the words of the Constitution which control the meaning. The they words not changed... take on their colour with changing circumstances, but, changing attitudes. Your Honour, this is not a change of colour. It's a change of absolute meaning. The Commonwealth's argument was, whatever the view of each member of the court as to whether or not this particular law was a beneficial law or was a law which was prejudicial to the persons of an Aboriginal race or a group of the Aboriginal race, it remained a matter for the Parliament and not the court to determine that matter. In other words, it was put that it's a matter not for the judicial sphere but the legislative sphere. Uh, and if that argument is accepted, then the matter will be determined without the judges having to express any view as to whether or not they regard such a law as a beneficial law or non-beneficial law. Your Honour, with respect to... But I was just going to also put to you, Dr Griffiths, that another view is that the term special law itself is a limitation which is justiciable and uh, to be special it must discriminate in some fashion, whether detrimentally or advantageously doesn't matter but if it does it has to have some rational basis and it's the court then to say that there is no <laughs> rational basis for this law. Well, with respect your honour, it may narrow subject matter but not narrow power. And how, how would you apply that distinction to the case of Nuremberg type laws which after all were race laws or to land area laws such as were enacted in South Africa now, would they be permissible under this power? Your Honour, they may well be. The racist power is an empirically a discriminatory law. Now, one in a real sense, constitutional law is applied philosophy. You talk about ideas. I don't think I can think of one case where I have pleaded confident that I must win. One is dealing with an area of uncertainty in constitutional issues and that really is how it is in the High Court. One can never be sure, and you always, in the oral argument, expose new areas which you try and foresee in your preparation, but which very much you have to be ready to deal with as they arise, and to deal with them, one hopes, decisively and in a satisfactory way, which does not have the effect of losing what might be the crucial view of one or two or more of the judges. Your Honours, uh, can, can I just get clear in my mind, is the Commonwealth's submission that it is entirely and exclusively for the Parliament to determine the matter upon which special laws deem necessary, or whatever the words say, or is there a point at which there is a justiciable question for the court? Well, Your Honour... I mean, it's, it seems unthinkable that a law such as the Nazi race laws could be enacted under the race uh, and that this court could do nothing about it. Your Honour, if there was a reason why the court could do something about it, a Nazi law, it would be now submission, Your Honour, be for a reason external to the race's power. It is very difficult pleading to a court which does not intervene and ask you questions and give you an idea of what matters concern the court. Sometimes the interventions are made by a judge who is having great difficulty or disagrees entirely with your approach and you deal with that as best you may on some occasions getting to a point of, uh, of a truce where each party makes it quite clear as to how it puts the case but understands that the other does not agree with it and you must accept when you plead a case that uh, where there's seven judges what you aim for is to get at least four and it may well be on occasions that you'll lose one or two on the way. The cumulative wisdom and knowledge on the Constitution um, is uh, amongst the seven is so much greater than any individual advocate can have uh, that one never knows where one is uh, going to be uh, attacked from next. Grows, please, have our submission. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The court will consider its decision in this matter and will adjourn until Tuesday next to 10.15. Cartonieri and the Commonwealth 
ended after two days of hearings in Canberra.